What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about creating a pergola structure using groups and components. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give you a start to finish training in SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Uh, make sure you check that out in the next day or so because the registration is is closing pretty soon. Um, now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I always like modeling pergola structures because they're a great example of how groups and components work inside of SketchUp. And so uh, let's go ahead and just get, get started and I'll kind of walk you through this a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the footprint of the area we're going to cover with this. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle. It's probably going to be 20 feet by 20 feet just like this one, and I'll go ahead and reverse my faces. I'm probably also going to double click on that, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to make that a group. So when I make that a group, what that means is it means this face is no longer going to merge with the rest of the geometry in here. So now if I come in here and I draw like a rectangle, um, the face here and the face here aren't going to merge together. And so to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, I'll probably draw a guide just to make sure that I'm off of this edge a little bit. So maybe two feet here two feet here, um, all the way around. And you can draw the guides using the tape measure tool. So you can see how if I tap the control key with the tape measure active, um, it gives me this little dotted line to the lower right hand side of my cursor. That indicates that create guide mode is on. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to create um, just, just kind of some geometry in here or some guides in here that are gonna show me where something is without me actually having to create um, any kind of like lines or anything like that. And so what I'm going to start off with is I'm just going to draw a two foot by two foot rectangle. So kind of like this one. And that may be a little bit big, but we want this to be a little bit big because we're going to assume there's going to be some kind of stone on the outside of it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by push pulling that up probably about three feet or something like that. And then I'm going to take this face and I'm just going to offset it out using the offset tool. Then I'm going to push pull this up just a little bit more, maybe like two inches or something like that. And when I do that, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase out this edge on the top here because I don't want this to be recessed. And you can see how when I erase out that edge, SketchUp uh, just kind of naturally fills this in. And so what I want to do with this is I want to take it and I want to select it. I want to right click and I want to make that a component. So, and probably what I'm going to, and the reason I want to make that a component is because it repeats inside this model. So we're just going to call this corner piece. When you do that, make sure the box for replace selection with component is checked. And you can go ahead and click create. And so what we want to do in this case is we want to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here. So remember, just tap the M key to activate the move tool, click on this corner, and then tap the control key to activate copy mode. That'll allow you to create a copy and place it right here. And then we're just gonna select both of these and do the exact same thing over here. So you can see how I now have these four copies in here. Well, one of the things I like about these is because we made these components, you can see how if I edit one of them, the others adjust as well. So now they're all linked. Meaning if I come in here and like, for example, I feel like the top of this needs to be a little bit thicker, maybe another two inches. So I can just push pull this up. Well, because these are all instances of the same component or copies of the same component, when uh, I make a change to one of them, the others change as well. And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna offset this in um, probably a fair amount in order to create my support posts. So my support posts are gonna come out of this edge right here. And you can see how when I push pull that up, I only have to do that one time, as opposed to four different times, um, or as opposed to um, waiting to make that copy until I've completely modeled one of these. So modeling with components is always a good idea. But in this case, I'm going to probably extrude this up. We're gonna call it uh, eight feet. So I've push pulled this up about eight feet. That'll give us kind of the base view of our pergola structure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model out um, kind of the details of our pergola. So we're gonna start off and I'm actually gonna draw a rectangle across these two different edges. So I'm just gonna tap the R key. And then if you remember one trick to lock this to the red axis is you can tap the right arrow key. 
So I activate the rectangle tool, I tap the right arrow key, you can see how that locks me to the red axis. Now I can use this to kind of move my mouse around and uh, not worry about this uh, not inferencing to the right place or anything like that. And we'll go ahead and assume that this is going to be about two feet tall. So something like this, and we're just going to push pull this across to give it some thickness. And so what I want to do is, again, we're going to use components in order to do this. So, and this is probably a little thicker than I wanted, to, wanted it to be, so I'm going to push pull it down maybe six inches. But I'm just going to triple click on this to select the whole thing, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click make component. And so what this will allow me to do is this will allow me to create my support beam and we'll just click create and we'll just do the same thing where we make a copy over here using the move tool and so now I can come in here and I can push pull this out maybe three uh, we'll call it two feet on each side like this and then I can come in here and I can kind of rough out the uh, decoration of that pergola shape so I'm just gonna draw kind of a curve right here curve here maybe something like a curve right here so just something to give us a little bit of decoration I actually am not a huge fan of the way that that looks but we'll go ahead and use it anyway so I'm gonna push pull this across but before I do that and before I do that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this edge and I'm actually gonna use the move tool in copy mode to make a copy over here I'm gonna use the scale tool to flip it And then I'm gonna move it back so that this edge touches right here. And so now I have that decoration on both sides over here and I can use the push-pull tool to just kind of extrude this across and click on this back side in order to remove that geometry. And I'm not the biggest fan of the way that looks, so I'm just gonna redesign this real quick. Um, so back in a second. There we go. So you can see how, because these are components, only having to come in and do this one time is actually really valuable. And so what I'm gonna do with these now is I'm actually going to create a copy of one of these using the Move tool, going up, and I'm actually going to rotate that. So I'm gonna rotate that using the Move tool. So just tap the M key and these little red crosshairs come up where you can single click on these and then turn this. And in this case, I've moved this 180 degrees and I'm gonna move it across so that it sits just like this. And I'm probably gonna move it over so that it's kind of centered on this beam right here. And what we wanna do now is we wanna use the array function of the Move tool. So what that means is you can actually create multiple copies of an object using the Move tool. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna use the the move tool just like we did before and I'm going to single click on this edge and you can see how as I move this this is moving my original well I don't want to do that I want to create copies so I'm gonna tap the control key and then move the mouse along the green axis and I'm gonna go ahead and we'll line this up with the back side right here so you can see how this is now lined up well, what we want is we want multiple different copies um, between these two points so without clicking on anything else after you've set your second point type in divided by type 5 and hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to create five copies of that between this point and this point. Well, including this one right here. And so one thing I don't like about these top ones is I actually want to have a couple more copies, but I want it to be more narrow. But I don't want to change these thicker ones down below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to click Make Unique. And so if you remember, this was a copy of the components down here. So before we clicked Make Unique, what this would have done is this would have changed the ones down below. Well, now it's not going to do that. So I can take this and I can move it back maybe like three inches or something like that and make it more narrow. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line this up by finding the midpoint and just moving this along the green axis and centering this. But now what we can do is we can select this and use the move tool in copy mode and we'll do the same thing that we did before where we click here, type in divided by, we'll say six, 
and hit the enter key. And so what that does, again, is that allows us to make these different copies in here. And you'll notice that all of these are linked because we made a copy of this unique component. Um, and these down below are no longer linked. So this makes it really easy to make a series of changes in here. And then the last thing you could do if you wanted to is let's say we wanted to have maybe some like two by fours or something like that sitting on here. So what we would do is we would just use the rectangle tool and we would make something that's four comma two, or actually it's probably gonna be 3.5 comma 1.5. I think those are the actual dimensions of a two by four. And I'm gonna go ahead, stand this up using the rotate tool. And we'll go ahead and push pull this on one side. We'll push pull it on the other. And then I'm just gonna triple click on this in order to make it a component. So we're gonna do the same thing where we call this like a two by four and hit the enter key. And then we'll just use the move tool in copy mode one more time using the array function. So I'm gonna make a copy that's lined up with this back line. And then I'm gonna type in divided by, we'll say 20 in this case, or divided by 25, something like that. And so you can see how it's really easy to make the copies of these two by fours using that tool. So now we could come in and we could add our textures and all of that, but hopefully this gives you an idea of the power of modeling with components inside your SketchUp models. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been using groups and components? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.